I think we are live. What's going on, TEI family? This uh, is the Everyday Investor. We have a, a special one for you all today. And uh, this is a special stream for a number of reasons. But I think uh, as you know, people talk about the, the pending recession, the impending recession that may be coming, maybe not coming. I'm not sure. Uh, I, no, I, I go back to a time, what, 10 years ago now, what, 2023? So, yeah, back in 2013 when I first got off into real estate and uh, – First of all, my uh, few investment properties, I remember the, the big purchase in particular, it was a uh, $100,000 duplex in Lansing, Michigan. I was going to, I was finishing undergrad on my way to go to uh, law school at Michigan State. So I'm working at DTE Energy as an engineer intern or engineer co-op and uh, just working crazy amount of hours trying to save up to try to you know, buy my first property. I remember, oh, seeing this duplex that I really liked and going to try to get a loan for it. And, uh, I, you know, took my, my, uh, offer letter from DTE for the, the co-op, which pretty much said he's going to be working from this day to, to this day. So it wasn't like an indefinite thing. It was like, Hey, no, this is a definite time period, uh, that he's going to be, uh, working here for. And I, I still got the loan. I got the loan to, uh, get the duplex. And I, I thought uh, after getting the loan and really closing on a property, I'm like, what the heck just happened? Uh, it was a surreal moment for me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not sure how they gave me this loan. Uh, when I told them that I was going to, I'm only working for like four months here. And uh, I guess fast forward a couple of years later, I figured out that I was able to use a part of the income from the property uh, for my income, which uh, really helped the numbers out. And uh, again, that's just something that I found out later as I continue to buy property, sell property, things like that. Uh, but, with all that being said, I think it's good when you get a chance to, kind of, when you are informed from the beginning, when you when you go into something, whether it's real estate or whether it's you no, know, being a doctor, being an attorney, whatever the case may be, you are informed. Uh, I think that gives you a lot more confidence. It allows you to move uh, more comfortable, and uh, that was something for me. I mean, I my information came from YouTube and came from just reading books, but I didn't really get a chance to talk to a lot of people who were uh, loaning out the money, who were you know, selling a property, who own property. I didn't get a chance to talk to a whole lot of people uh, in that regard. So uh, for me, even though I jumped into the real estate game 10 years ago, I wasn't maybe as informed as I could have been. And I think, again, this stream is good because we're talking with the experts now. Uh, this gentleman that we're going to bring on here in a second that I'm going to bring up and he's going to talk to us about, you no. Know, real estate and some terms and how we get, how, how can just the average person, the everyday person get into it? I mean, he, he's an expert. He's a, he's a bona fide expert in this game so that, uh, so that people who are watching this live, they don't have to uh, start on it, start down this path. Like I did just jumping into it without kind of really knowing what to expect and uh, just kind of, you know, bumbling around or landing in the right place, but they, they can go into it with confidence because they're getting information, valuable information, relevant information, from uh, bona fide experts. So, with all that being said, I'm going to bring up uh, Mr. Willie McGuire. H how's, it, how's it going, Willie? I'm good, buddy. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, I, and I and I appreciate you for uh, uh, agreeing to kind of you know, come on and talk to uh, the audience here a little bit today about about real estate. Uh, again, as I said before, again, you're a bona fide expert uh, currently. I appreciate that. Uh, I, you know, like I said, I, I do, I do what I do, man. You know, I, I'm here to help people, man. That's what I'm here for. Right. No, and, and that's big because a lot of times, you know, people is for me personally, I know sometimes, you know, without having information or having resources that you can kind of turn to or get information from before you do it, it can kind of, uh, like stifle you or, or like not give you all the confidence that you need to jump into something. Uh, but you know, hopefully some information that uh, you're going to share today is going to be, uh, very helpful for the person who's just trying to figure out, man, I want to get into the real estate game, but I'm not sure how do I get into it, whether it's from home ownership or trying to buy an investment property, whatever the case may be. And uh, I think you know, some of the things that you're going to share with us today is going to be extremely valuable to help that person uh, take that next step or take that leap uh, into the real estate journey. So uh, can, can you talk a little bit about uh, kind of your current position and what you currently do on a day in and day out? Uh, I know we were talking yeah. a little bit before. So right now I'm the divisional uh, president with Diamond Residential Mortgage out of Chicago. Yeah. I'm here in Michigan. I oversee Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois as a region. 
<clears throat> and I'm still involved in the day to day operations. I'm still out here working with real estate agents, working with buyers that are buying homes, working with sellers who are selling homes. I'm working with investors who are buying and selling and flipping as well. I'm dealing with uh, builders and contractors on building new homes. Um, I'm dealing with commercial side as well in, in getting people into commercial buildings and in building businesses as well that they're looking to acquire and whatnot. Okay. So we, we encompass a lot of different things uh. in, in my day to day. Um, but like I said, I'm still involved day to day with, you know, getting people in the homes, you know, whether they're buying a $60,000 fixer upper or they're buying a $8 million home, I'm treating them and I'm dealing with them one-on-one. And that goes from 8 a.m. until midnight, wow. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If my phone is ringing and I'm answering it, we talk in business. Gotcha. You know? And a lot of people just, they shut it down at five or six o'clock. I learned something a long time ago from one of my mentors in this industry. The phone rings, you're answering. Right. You know, the phone rings and your customer's calling. You know, don't send them the voicemail. Pick up that phone and, and, and talk to them. Give them the advice they need so they don't got to call back tomorrow. You know, so you can focus on that next call, you know, and help that next customer as well. No, and, I, and that, that makes 100%, uh, but, uh, 100% sense. But it's interesting because you, you would think that a lot of people don't have that same mindset. It seems like five o'clock, four o'clock, they shut it down. And me and I've even kind of ran into situations, whether it was with real estate or something else, where it's like, hey, I'm out of the office. Or call me tomorrow. Or call me on. I mean, yeah. even if it's on the weekend, because a lot of times I'll, I'm doing things on the weekend and trying to get things done. And they're like, hey, you no, know, call me on Monday or call the office on Monday. And it's like, man, do, how, how bad does this person really want it? Uh, yeah. If they're you know kind of going about it that way. Uh, so I, I guess with all that being said, uh, so you're you're not, I know you said you some of the things that you, uh, uh, areas that you work, uh, with, or the people you work with, you also work with like homeowners as well as maybe investors. Of uh, course. Yeah. That's my, that's my, that's my main function is to deal with residential lending. You know, okay. everything else is a sub subsequent, uh, additional program that we offer out there, but we deal with all buyers. Okay. You know? And, uh, you know, and, uh, like I said, that's, that's 90% of, of my business is, is coming from home buyers or move up buyers or sellers that are that are looking to buy or sell a home. You know, it's tough right now with the economic climate that's going on, with yep. rates and whatnot, everyone's yep. getting discouraged, whatnot. There, there's a lot of debates going on out there. When are rates gonna come down? Yep. You know, when is the best time to buy? And these are things that I'm answering every day, but I don't have the crystal ball, yep. I'll be honest. If I did, I'd probably be an investor and not really be involved in, in lending the money but I'd be playing the numbers and I'd be playing the hedging the money to, to, to make these decisions because I would know it. But uh, the reality is, is that no one knows really when rates are going to come back down. They're going to come down slowly. I know that because they would, the industry can't afford for them to come crashing down. Right. Okay. Uh, it, it, and I guess before getting off into, I guess, the interest rates, because I do want to talk about that. Okay. I just want to go just to kind of at a, at a very simple term. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, just kind of giving some simple, simple definitions here. What is the difference between residential real estate and commercial real estate? Because I know you said you do a lot on a, a more so on the residential side and then the commercial is like a subset. Yeah. Uh, if, you know, somebody coming into your office and uh, how, how are you explaining, hey, what's the difference between residential real estate and then commercial real estate? Well, anything over four units, okay. by Fannie Mae definition, is going to be commercial or multifamily, extended multifamily. Yep. Okay. So that's something that's going to be a different type of home or, you know, a store frontage. That's going to be commercial. Okay. Again, we talked about briefly self-storage buildings. Uh, those are going to be commercial. Uh, gas stations, you know, that's commercial. Um, hotels, you know, we do those as well. Those are commercial. Um, like I said, office buildings, office complexes, shopping centers, commercial. Uh, residential, again, is going to be anything one to four family. Okay. Okay. No, that's good. That's good information. So somebody coming into your office and saying, Hey, I want to purchase a house or I'm, you know, I'm looking to purchase a house and I'm trying to get lending for it. I guess <laughs> what steps do you typically, uh, take them through in terms of, uh, or are they coming in and saying, Hey, I want a single family or, Hey, I want a two to four units and you're just kind of writing alone. Or are you asking follow-up questions to try to kind of figure out what's the best, uh, I guess property that they need to be looking yeah, at based on their you. goals. Yep. So what I do is an interview process. And I basically go down, you know, income, assets, credit, and I, I and I go through just the, the normal stuff. 
what are, what are your expectations? If they're being unrealistic or they have unrealistic expectations, we have to set the proper expectation for gotcha. them so that we're all on the same page. Gotcha. What, what, what can my income support in making a purchase of a home? I, I have that conversation almost every single day because unfortunately a lot of people don't know. But if you look at what you're paying in rent, yep. what your, and, and what your income is coming in, your income with all your debts and bills and everything should not exceed 50% of your income, okay, your taxable income, okay. So if you're making fifty thousand a year, okay, that means you got twenty five thousand disposable to buy a house with and pay all your other bills with. Everything else is secondary. So that's kind of where that's the that's the max yep. that we're looking for because there's always things that are going to come up. Yep. Um, oh, I forgot about that bill, or I forgot about this bill. We're looking at the maximum amount we can utilize for qualifying someone on the loan. So again, we got to talk. We got to have that conversation. Okay, what's your income look like? How long have you been on the job? Who do you bank with? How much you got in the bank? Realistically, how much are you looking to spend on a home? And can we afford that? Okay. So, so when you say twenty five, so in that example that you're saying, okay, if someone makes fifty, then we take half of that, and you say you can afford to pay twenty five thousand dollars on a home. Is that the purchase price, or is that no, 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 the, no, the, the, the uh, max over the course of the, the year? income allowed that we can use spread out over twelve months? Okay. Okay. So in terms of like servicing a loan. No. So, so the example is you make 5,000 a month, 2,500 a month is everything. All your bills have to be encapsulated inside of that $2,500. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's how we base it off of. Okay. And you know, student loans, a lot of people think right now because they don't have a payment on the student loans that we as a lender don't calculate that in. So they're qualifying. Well, yeah. it, unfortunately we do. Yeah. That'd be we, silly not to. Yeah. So even if well, I don't have a payment on it, I haven't made payment in three years. Well, eventually you're going to have to start making those payments. We have to factor that in. Right. Okay. So, and that's, that's a big hit. A lot of people lose deals because they don't properly factor in student loans. They go, they think because they have zero payment that that doesn't count against them. When you have $50,000 in student loans, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac say, hey, we're going to hit you with a half a percent of that balance as a payment. Well, if you got a hundred thousand dollars in student loans, which some people do, you're getting hit with a decent amount. I mean, that's a that's a five hundred dollar or so payment on a monthly basis that you didn't factor in, right? And it, it's your qualification, and the lender has to do their job properly, okay? And a lot of times, a lot, I'm not saying any names, but I've worked for a lot of companies, and people just miss it, or people just don't think about it, or they think that the underwriter is not going to catch it. These underwriters catch everything. I would imagine. You know, I would and if, imagine. We don't, if they don't catch it, the investor who is, you know, Fannie Freddie, you know, Jenny May, you know, they're going to catch it. And then we got a problem, you know. So, 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 so then again, we, we, we talked about interest rates uh, earlier. Can, can you talk a little bit about that? I know kind of things are, 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 are up yeah. at this point, but as far as how, how does interest rates affect how much real estate you can buy or how much, how, how you know, big of a loan you can get. It's affecting everyone right now. Okay. The government try to do things to try to, to try to curb that. But the reality is from 2022 in the, in the first quarter of 2022 till now, we've seen interest rates spike three and a half to 4%. Okay. That means a person that was getting a hundred thousand dollar loan yep. at three and a half percent or whatever, and now getting it at 7% is paying about $300 more a month. Okay. And some people can't handle that. Now you talk about, you know, a, a $200,000 home or $300,000 home. And now you're talking about six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800 more a month. That's thousands, tens of thousands of dollars a year. And, and it's making, uh, it's, it's really curbing what people can afford, especially if you're first time home buyer, especially if you're a one income family, especially if you've got a lot of debt, student loans, things like that. It's affecting the affordability of buying a home. And right now, homes are going at a premium. I mean, that right now, we listed a home with, with a good friend of mine and a realtor. We listed it for $199 the other day. We got 20 offers the same day. Really? The very first day. It was the nicest house that came up in the community. And we listed it low. First day, first offer without any other bids, we got 10000 over asking. Wow. Now, you got your first time home buyer who doesn't have an extra ten or 15000 to throw at that house. They're just trying to get in on a basic bare bones program, maybe 3% down or, or whatnot, they can't compete against that next person. Yep. 
They can't compete against an investor. So what then? What what is it for that person? And that's what's what we have right now is we have a bunch of first time home buyers, a bunch of people who don't have a lot of money that want to get into home buying that can't. They're being dis disenfranchised from being able to buy homes right now. Okay. So no, yeah, and I was going to say. So how, is it anything that those type people can? Do to put themselves in a better position to be able to buy a home as far as those first time home buyers who are kind of yes, yes they can. They've got to be they they gotta be focused for one. They gotta work with a good lender who understands their plight as well. And that lender's gotta put them with a good real estate agent that's gotta work for them. Okay. And they can't fall in love with the first house they see that everyone else falls in love with that just came on Zillow uh two hours ago. Right. Everyone wants that brand new fresh house with all the updates and everything else. Everyone wants that. So now you're competing against it. everyone. You've got to find that one-off scenario sometimes. you got to find that home that makes it your own. Okay? And that's one thing we offer as well with our with crash our renovation loans. We offer people that opportunity. Make this home your own. we got a 203K. we got a home style renovation. we got the Fannie Freddie products that are available. And we have other construction products that are available. And that may be the way that some of these consumers need to go. You know, a home that's not as nice, maybe it's in the same community, but maybe it's forty, fifty thousand less, or maybe it's thirty thousand dollars less, but it needs fifty thousand dollars worth of work. That that sale that you wanted that you really liked that sold for two hundred thousand, you can get into that similar home. You're just gonna have to go through a real rehabilitation on that loan. So 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 I guess and this is a good point to kinda kinda try to mine through because and we're saying, hey, this person maybe doesn't have the cash to be able to uh, afford this put together home already. Then I guess how do they go about uh, you know, buying a fixer upper at which they, you know, spending 40, 50 grand on a rehab? Yeah, they just have to get qualified for that loan with a, a, a qualified lender that does rehabilitation loans. So is that, so is that, would that be called like a construction loan or? It could be a construction loan. It could be a 203K loan. Okay. It yep. could be a home style renovation loan. There are different types of loans that are available for that. Not every lender does the renovation loans, though, because it's a, it's an intensive process that everyone has to go through. There's a lot of training on the lender side, and there's is a process to judge educate your consumers on as well. And not everyone's really cut out for it. Right. It's a lot more work. Sometimes the realtors don't want to deal with it as well. But once we get the loan closed, that's when really that's when this process starts for the lender. That's when all the back end work is happening. We're dealing with the contractor, which again, you got to get contractor bids. That's when, you know, we're making sure that, you know, things are getting done properly by the contractors. If there's structural repairs, we have a HUD uh, representative in checking out, making sure that things are going as planned. And when there's not a process in place, when there's not a good flow, the HUD consultant will shut it down and say, hey, this isn't going as we expected. Yeah. So no one runs off with any money as well. So th that's a great tool that, that FHA and HUD has available and that Fannie uses as well with regards to renovation projects for consumers so no one gets taken advantage of. Got you. Got you. Okay, so then, and you were saying, is that part of the 203K loan or is that, I guess- That is part of a 203K loan. There's multiple, there's different types of 203K loans that are available. Yep. Um, there's a standard loan, which doesn't really have any uh, major uh, structural changes to it. And and then and then there's another loan as well. I can't, can't think of a name right this very minute. But so so, so yeah. then and again, uh, some of this stuff, just kind of being in the real estate game, I I, yeah. I, I, I I know already. But again, some other stuff I learned, so that's why I like to take notes and things like that. But yeah. I guess how does does you know, you know from my understanding, you have like a VA loan, you have the conventional loan, you have an FHA loan. Yeah. Uh, when you get like when you're rehabbing a property or buying a property to rehab, yeah. can you get a tool? Two or three K loan with each of those, or is that like a separate thing altogether? It's 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 a type of loan through FHA for 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 a first time home buyer and someone it's buying it for their primary resident. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. If it's an investment property where you're trying to get a a, a rehab loan for that, we have a fix and flip pro, uh, project or a uh, loan as well. Okay. That's for investors who are trying to turn and burn and put a property back on the market within three to six months. Gotcha. We're not delivering that loan to Fannie and Freddie. They don't accept that one. Gotcha. And if we have a, a, a say you want to go like to a conventional loan, that's a rehab loan. We have a conventional rehab loan as well. So gotcha. you have multiple different rehab loans available to you. We just have to discuss those individually. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Uh, 
Okay. Okay. No, that's good. So then as far as, uh, I, I guess, you know, we talked about the two or three K. So then as far as, can you kind of maybe break down, I guess, these particular three, a uh, conventional loan, an FHA loan, and a, uh, uh, what was the other loan? The conventional FHA. And then yeah. uh, the VA. Because I actually, yeah, when I yeah. bought my first duplex uh, about 10 years ago, I actually got an FHA loan, which helped me out because I only had to put down with 3% at that point, yeah. which kind of really helped out. Yeah. So, again, conventional is conventional starts at 3% with its uh, with this home ready uh, whole possible program. That's a great, great loan. And we'll talk more about that loan as well because there's some new changes coming down the road that's going to really direct more people to that prop that project property, well, that type of loan. FHA, 3.5% down. Uh, it's a government-backed loan. We have MISHTA that's tied to that in the state of Michigan, which is our down payment assistance loan through the state as well. We're approved MISHTA, Linda, approved FHA, approved VA. VA is for our veterans, so they can take advantage of 100% financing on their loans. Now, one thing I want to talk about with regards to VA. I'm a VA advocate. I, I do a lot of work with the VA for our veterans because they are not treated the right way at all. A lot of real estate agents don't understand VA loans, and and therefore they kind of, you know, look down to them. But our veterans have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Absolutely, should be treated as such. So when they come in with their VA offer, okay, they should be treated just like someone who's putting twenty or thirty percent down. Absolutely. But they're worried about repairs. The realtors are, or they're they're telling their consumers, be worried about the repairs. Be worried that the appraisal is not going to come in on the VA. All, the appraisers are treating these all the same way. Appraisers don't uh, appraise VA differently than they right. do a conventional loan or FHA loan. They treat it fairly. Absolutely. But there are certain things with regards to the uh, the condition of the home that on all government loans need to be met. Okay? So the VA actually tells you if, if there's a problem with the value, it will give you an opportunity to show cause why that value should be given. And they give you a timeline. Hey, Mr. Real Estate Agent, I'm only valuing your property at 389. You got it listed at 400. Tell me why I should be seeing it at 400. Mm-hmm. Tell me why it should be. And if you can't give me a bona fide reason why, then I'm praising it at 389. But they give you an opportunity to voice your op, uh, your your displeasure if the appraisal is not going to come in. No other law gives you that op- opportunity. And our VA laws do give us that opportunity. We also offer a VA renovation law. Okay, it's a great product. Goes along with the FHA 203K and our health style renovation as well. But our veterans, uh, our, our programs are very strong. Again, 0%, um, uh, zero, 0 down. And um, again, a lot of the fees and costs uh, associated with VA loans are waived by the lender as well. And we cover those expenses as well. So we try to minimize the cost on our veteran loans as well. And uh, like I said, I've been a long standing. VA advocate, been trained uh, by the Veterans Administration on how to properly uh, educate our veterans on how to deliver those loans as well. And uh, like I said, our veteran community rewards us with a lot of opportunities to service them. So, so, and, and I had a guest on recently, and she's a veteran. She was in the Navy, uh, ran and knows her, uh, Tia Drain, and she bought two, two properties uh, using the VA loan. And I, I didn't realize. The VA loan, from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is zero money down that you, so you don't have to put any money down. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. You don't have to put any money down, but you still have your closing costs and prepaid right. things like that as yep. well. But the great thing about VA loans, say you, you know, because veterans get relocated fairly often as well, you can rent your property and they give you, as a lender, we'll give, say you, you got to relocate to San Diego. Yep. You're living in Michigan now. We'll allow you to rent your property before you leave will give you credit for that rental income to go buy another house right away. Not, not, you know, right away, like immediately, like I'm moving tomorrow. I'm renting my house. I got a lease agreement. We're giving you credit for that rental right now. Cause it typically, how long does it take for you to be able to get that credit? 12 months or until you file your tax return. So uh, there's a lot of loopholes. I don't like to put out there. the. It's not really loopholes, but there's certain things in the loan process that and I, I don't want to talk on this, David, because it comes up a lot on Instagram and these other things. People always trying to give insight on how to get over on me in the lending industry, how I bought four properties, blah, 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 doing this. And I, I'd be clowning on these guys. I'll be honest, because all you're trying to do is create mortgage fraud. You're trying to, right. you're doing fraud. You got to stop that. 
if, if there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do things, do it the right way. Okay. And if you think something's going to, you're going to get something for free, you're not. But that, at the end of the day, a, more, a good mortgage lender will educate you on how to go about getting a loan done. And they'll tell you if they can't. And if they say they can't do it, chances are you're probably in that gray area of breaking the law. So, so Ronnie, I guess what's the situation you were talking about as far as somebody saying that they, you know, bought four properties using what now? Well, like I said, it's like saying, on Instagram right now, I was climbing on somebody earlier. They told a person to go buy a fourplex, rent that four, you can rent out three fourplexes, and in a year after you buy it, go buy another fourplex or go buy another property and use the income from that fourplex to qualify for the new one. The problem is most consumers don't claim the rental income properly or don't claim it at all. Yep. Okay? Sure. Two, um, they bought that property really in false pretense that they were going to utilize it as a primary residence. Yep. Okay. And many that take advantage of these down payment assistance programs or whatnot claim that they will live in the property for five years before making it a rental or before moving on or things like that. There's certain stipulations to a lot of these down payment assistance and first time homebuyer program that have that written in there. Now, whether you read it clearly and understand it clearly that right. that's the guide. Yeah. So be it. I've seen people buy homes, have no interest in ever living there. Day one, and they convert it to a rental. And it can cause a major problem for not only the lender, but for that consumer, because that is fraud. And a lot of times the lenders are the ones that they blame, but the consumer is culpable for that. So you got to be forthright with your lender, got to be forthright with yourself and not try to you know if you if you want to be an investor be an investor right but put put some skin in the game yeah 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 yeah. you got to put that 25 percent down and, and 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 invest yourself into that transaction if that's what you want to do now again it's okay to live and be a landlord and live in your fourplex and whatnot and buy other properties nothing wrong with that right but this particular scenario was buy a fourplex live in it a year then go buy another property using the 5% down program and living that for a year and then flip that into a rental and then go and buy another property. And the key to all of that is you have to report the income and earnings. If you report zero, you're getting zero and your leverage on a property you're not claiming income on, which in some cases is illegal as well. I, I guess why, why wouldn't they report the income or claim the income on their taxes? <laughs> Dave, um, most most consumers who, who they write off everything, they write off every dime, so they don't have to pay tax. Man, that's that's See, tough. I, mean, I, I get trying to you know pay less taxes as possible, but yep. in terms of like just writing off so that, and again, you're going to have depreciation and things like that, you know, insurance yep. stuff, uh, maintenance that you can you know write off legitimately yeah. and and. Take advantage a lot of times people just need to get an accountant. They really need an accountant to educate them on the product yeah. of being an investor as well. I, 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 you can ask Brandon, I, I refer my Dinah Smith, my accountant. I refer a lot of people to my account because they need to know how to do things the right way. Right. Okay. Uh, my son, shout out little, little Will and McGuire. He is going to be an accountant as well. He's in his third year in accounting at Adrian College, uh, currently at Price Waterhouse. As an intern right now. Nice, nice, nice. I nice. Oh, got, you know, but, uh, you know, it is, um, it's a game that a lot of people play and they play it the wrong way. So, and you just do it the right way. Everyone's trying to get ahead. Yeah, yeah, I understand you know, that. Win, win at the game of life and the game of life still, you got to play it the right way. You got to do things the right way. So, so what, what's the importance from your perspective of, cause I mean, I, 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 hey, for the last, you know, coming out of, undergrad in college and mm -hmm. you initially when you do your taxes you were kind of going with you seeing you no know, everybody does taxes these days so everybody has a cousin or an aunt or an uncle, somebody does taxes that you can go to and pay the hundred dollars a couple hundred dollars you got a couple yep. kids you can claim and uh you know next thing you know you're getting six <laughs> seven eight thousand dollars back in life is good yeah two or three months but but when you start like when you have a business you're trying to operate things professionally and uh the right way can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the importance of uh like having an accountant, not even from like, like the purchase standpoint to you no know, avoid you no know, fraud or things like that. And you still have to be up on an accounting. It's not like yep, exactly. it's trying to blind eye. 
But uh, I, I would imagine that it helps you out as the lender when you know somebody is kind of trying to come get a loan and you're asking for different documentation and they can produce that and uh, feel confident that it's done right because it's done by a CPA or an accountant as opposed to uh, 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 Sonequa who, uh, you know, she, she's been doing taxes for a couple of years. It, it comes down to this. Right now, everyone's trying to be an entrepreneur. Everyone's okay. trying to be a creator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so what comes with that, they're getting paid under the table contracts things like that, you still have to report some earnings in order to buy a home. You still have to report income in order to qualify for a home, okay? And um, the reality is is that you need a really good accountant. You don't want to be that statistic, that NFL player, that you don't want to be that that superstar who didn't pay tax, the IRS says you own $50 million. Yeah. Okay, you don't want to be that person. Okay, none of us want to be that person. I've been through an audit myself. Hey, it ain't no fun. Right. Okay. But you got to report your earnings. Okay. Um, it is imperative if you've got attorneys working for you, like yourself. Yep. If you've got, you know, if you go to see a doctor, you're, you're seeing a professional. Go see a tax professional yep. as well. It doesn't have to be a CPA, but it needs someone that's got to be someone that's trained on how to handle business tax returns or self employed income. Okay, uh, and and that's good. And I, I would even take it a step further. I, just because you're an accountant, I, I I want somebody who specializes in real estate. If I'm my big thing is yep. real estate, I want to go to an accountant that specializes in real estate as opposed to someone who maybe not as active or involved with in, in the real estate industry. Just so I know that from a you no know, tax benefit perspective, I, I'm getting everything that is is due to me uh, from a legal from a, le, a legitimate standpoint. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt there. But let's talk on taxes real quick. Okay, I want to. You brought up a great point. This is the best time of year for first-time home buyers, people who want to buy a home, get back into home buying, to to take advantage of home ownership. Okay, okay, you get a tax return, you get a little bit of money in your pocket. Don't go and blow your money on junk. Okay, don't go and get a new car. Don't unless you need transportation to get to and from work. Don't go buy. Invest in your future. Invest in yourself. A home ownership is the biggest tax write-off that most of us will have outside of our children. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Take advantage of that money that you're getting back from Uncle Sam. It, you know, these tax laws keep changing. You know, pretty soon, as you know, a lot of people are seeing dwindling tax refunds. Okay. The reality is, is that that's going to continue. Okay. We need to invest in our own home ownership. Okay. And so many of us don't have that ability to buy, but we really do be if we just manage our finances better. Yeah. You know, I tell people and people can reach out to me, I'll send you a budget sheet. It's generic form. Just put your debts and liabilities down and, and you can figure out how much money you're wasting on a monthly basis. Yeah. I look at tax returns. I look at bank statements. You would believe the amount of waste. We as Americans, we, we waste so much money eating out. We, we, we waste so much money on things that, don't really have any value. Right. But when I say to someone, your house payment is going to be twelve fifty a month. Why is it going to be so high? You spent twelve hundred fifty last month just eating out and stuff. Easy. You know, grocery shopping, but yet you still went and ate out. Right. You know, what's the point of going buying groceries if you're going to eat out every day? So, so, so then, and I, I know you have said that you recommend uh, your accountant, different people who uh, maybe are looking for somebody. Would you would you have happen to have the same thing? Because obviously, the better your credit score is, uh, the the better interest rate you get, which means that over the course of the loan, you're paying less in interest, which you know could save you tens of thousands of dollars, or uh, uh, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the uh, size of the property. Uh, I guess what tips do you give to people, or do you refer them to someone as it relates to getting their like credit in the best shape as possible prior to, uh, you know, trying to apply for a loan? That's a great question, Dave. I appreciate it. Um, what I try to do is evaluate it, give them tips on it up front. I'm yeah. not a credit repair specialist or anything like that. Yeah. I'll be honest. I don't believe in a lot of those companies. Some of them are out there doing really. Uh oh, uh oh, did we just lose them? Yeah, there they are. Sorry about okay, that. Okay, yeah, we're here, we're here. Yeah. So believe in a lot of that. Um, what I do tell, I try to evaluate it. I tell them things that they need to work on. And we, we have tools in our office to help people through the credit bureaus as well. It doesn't cost them money to, to utilize some of the tools we have 
at our disposal. Okay. Every credit report I get, it tells the consumer, tells me, hey, the consumer has the ability to improve their credit scores by 60, 80 points. It tells me right there on the credit report. Really? Yeah. Does I mean, it tell you what that person needs to do to be able to get that increase? It doesn't break it all down step by step, gotcha. but it says they have the ability because the, the, it, it's an algorithm that, that's running. Right. Okay. Right. And it's basically saying, it, you know, you look at, first thing I do is look at high balance revolving credit card. Okay. How many of them are maxed out? Right there is 10, 15 points. You know, pay, paying stuff half down to 50% of the max. That's, that's going to get you points right there. You know, sometimes it's just picking up the phone call and dialing DTE saying, hey, DTE, you know, I'm trying to get a mortgage and um, I show a late back in 2021. Can you help me out with that? DTE will give you a one-time grace removal of the, yeah, derogatory in your credit. Okay. So go with some of your credit card companies. If you're, you know, Capital One is one and ain't giving you nothing. You know, but some of these companies will work with you and say, you know, we'll, we'll take care of that or your credit unions or things like that. They'll, they'll sometimes work with you to help right. you out because they don't, they want to be able to extend credit to you in the future. Right, 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 right. Okay. No, that makes perfect sense. But like I said, most lenders have tools in place. Now they can't give you like, say, if you do this, this will happen because now they're working as they're, they're claiming they're a specialist on that, but they can say, Hey, listen, you know, you can do a lot of this yourself. Okay. And that's one thing I want to talk about because the, um, a lot of these debt consolidation and debt reconciliation companies, they take your payments and they settle your debt for less than the full amount. So sure. you can do yourself. Yep. You know, you got a thousand dollar debt. You want to pay them, say, Hey, I'll give you 25 cents on the dollar. If you remove this debt from me. Yep. And they'll say, okay. And then they'll remove it. And That's good reviewing stuff. the Fair Credit Reporting Act, something I've specialized, you know, kind of reviewed myself to help my own credit. Because when I was young, coming out of college, I was reckless. Man. Hey, 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 I was hey, at Macy's. The park. I was at Hudson's back in the days. I'm buying clothes. I didn't have any sense of responsibility then. Right. Yep. You know, when that bill came due, it was sitting on my table until I got around to open it. And then it was late. You know, it, it's just, we all made bad mistakes. Yep. Okay. And so you got to learn from those mistakes. And I credit my wife on getting me organized with regards to paying my bills on time as well and putting money aside and having them reserved. You know, yep. Because you never know, lose your job tomorrow. And hit, you, you get injured, you know, tomorrow and you can't work for 30, 60, 90 days. How's that, how's that mortgage going to get paid? How's your car payment going to get paid? You got to have some reserves. Yep. And people need to start with that right there. Save up three months reserves. Have that in the bank, readily available. Don't spend it. And if something comes up, you got that rainy day fund to do whatever you need to do. You need to do a home improvement because when you buy a house, everything's not going to be perfect. Right. You know, you get a plumbing problem. You got to call plumbers $1,200 to get a plumber in there to fix a problem. You got to have the money available. Yep. I'm not going to do it for free. You know, so not doing that. It's all about being fiscally responsible and responsible with what you own as well. So, so I guess let me ask you this, because I think, yeah. and, and correct me if I'm wrong, we were talking uh, like, this was maybe a few weeks ago, uh -huh. maybe even a month or so ago now, and uh, you were saying that your son, he was in the process of kind of buying maybe a, his first investment property, was that? Was that no, he's looking at buying his first house, man. He okay. Buying, you know, buying the house that he's going to live in for his final two years up in school. We looked at, we actually looked at one yesterday. Okay, so then I guess it's still it's still a pretty good question. So, what's the difference, or how do you determine or advise people as it relates to buying a house as opposed to buying an investment property? Because I guess I I guess I'm of the mindset personally that everybody, regardless of whether you have a house or not, should at least own an investment property. Uh, but I guess how you gotta own you gotta own your, you gotta own your own home first. Um, okay, the lending guidelines state you gotta in order to buy an investment property, you first must own a home of your own. Okay. That's the kind of a guideline for lending. You okay. Hold on, hold on. I, I guess how does that work? So you're saying that it, before I own a home, I have to. I mean, before I own an investment property, I have to own a home. Is that through it like a FHA or is that or like any loan or is that just like a particular type of loan? Well, again, that that's that's Fannie Mae's guideline. You know, verbatim. You know, you you cannot own an investment property 
if you don't own a primary home. You know, if you only if you want to live with mom and dad and buy an investment property and you're buying it cash, you can do whatever you want to do. Okay, but if you want to get a mortgage for it and you want to you, and you want to put twenty five percent down, I'm sure there's a way that you can get around it. But if you there's no other way to go about doing so uh, that that I'm aware of. You know, and, and, I mean that's good information because I, I I guess I've never uh I, I guess I never knew that I you no know, I was thinking if you were renting a place and you know you wanted to go purchase a a, a pro, you know, an investment property to start you know renting it out twenty five percent down twenty five percent down you can make it happen. Right, no, okay, so you're saying in an event that you're trying to put less than 25% down. Yeah, there's no other way. Yeah, okay, way. but you're you're saying you can rent somewhere, be renting a place somewhere, you want to go you buy an investment it. property. The, the guidelines are very strict with regards to that. I haven't ran into that problem recently, and uh, but in the past I have ran into it. But say you own your home free and clear, and you want to go buy an investment property. You could do it, but you already own your own home. But it's, it's, it's really the risk rate because, you know, you're renting something, you're buying a property to, and investing in a property, and you don't own your own home already to fall back on. Okay, and I think that's the way it's really looked at. And I'll have to look up the guidelines on that again and check it out, and make sure it hasn't changed at all. But yeah. that was the guideline in the past that you had to own your own home. You can't go out and get an FHA loan for an investment property. That's yeah, no, and, no, and that, that that makes perfect sense. I guess you were thinking. I think. I guess I thought you were thinking in terms of loans across the board or investment properties bought across the board. But that makes sense if. No, they don't want to go go buy. You're renting and you want to go buy a a commercial investment property and you got the funds to be able to do it and you got the the income. Yeah, you could do whatever you want. Right, right, for sure. But when it comes to residential, you know, four family and below, the underwriting guidelines read that you need to own your own home. No, that that, that makes sense. That that, that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, that that makes perfect sense. Huh. No, yeah, I... So that 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 that's good information. And then I guess, how can people get started? I know you were talking about uh, that you know, hey, investing in or, or you know, owning your own home and how now that's a big part of uh, of I guess you know what you say compared to your kids uh, uh, what you're what you're doing uh, I, I guess how do you advise people or kind of what do you uh, recommend to people as far as and how do we get started? Uh, if somebody coming to you off the streets or you just run it buffed into somebody and they're like, hey man. I'm trying to buy a home where I'm, you know, yeah. not how to say that. Get with a good lender. Okay. Get with a lender that gotcha. knows they're not telemarketers. No offense to those telemarketers that work for big companies out there, but you're not talking to a telemarketer. You got a problem solver that can help you and evaluate your approval. That's the first step. Okay. And knowing that you don't waste that person's time if you're not really ready. Right. But because when, when I sit down with someone, I'm spending money to evaluate their approval. Right. You know, it cost me 30, 60, 80, 90, 100 hours to run their credit, and I'm doing background, doing things. I'm pulling verifications of employment. I'm putting my team to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Day one. And when I say my team, when I take an application, I send an email to my whole team like, all right, let's get on this right now. Boom, boom, boom. So when that loan is ready to go to underwriting, we got everything ready to go. Right. That way we can speed through the process of getting the loan from start to finish, Seven, 10, 12 days. Boom. I'm, I got you in the house. When I make promises to people on dates, unless something comes up, we hitting them dates and we hit them early and on time. So, okay. So, so then as far as, okay, so that's good in terms of like, I know you talked about the lender and then the realtor, but I guess before they even come see you, what are some of the things that they can have in order uh, with themselves before they come to see you so that it's more of a, you know, a, no, 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 their credit. Okay. No, their debts and liabilities. Okay, know, know what to, and, and and have an idea of what they want to buy, where they want to live at. Gotcha. Okay, a lot of times people call me and say, hey, I really don't know, you know, what I'm looking for. Right. Well, you got to have an idea. Do you want a three-bedroom house, four-bedroom house? Right. Do you want to live in the suburbs? Do you want to live in the city? You know, a lot of people say, I I want, I don't want a maintenance free. I, I want a condo. Well, understand that a condo is a lot more costlier than a single family home. HOA fees. Yes, the major HOA fees will bust your head off. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm all time. Every so, time. Gotta be, gotta be on top of that. Oh, that's good. Condos are great things. They're great places. But again, you know, do you want to live next to your neighbor? Yeah. Do you want to, you want everybody here on your business? Yeah. You know, that may not work for everybody. You know, some people want to live in the, in the, in the suburbs. They want to live in a neighborhood and then they complain that their neighbors are right on top of them there. 
No. Okay, so maybe they maybe don't want to live in the country a little bit. And they got to look at the commute and how far that is. One thing about country living is taxes are lower. Okay, you got a little bit of room space. But there's a lot more maintenance involved in that property. Yeah. Okay, these are all things that you need to be thinking about as well. You know, we get a lot of requests for, you know, I want, I want a pole barn on my property. I want to be able to do other businesses on my property as well and be able to, you know, uh, whatever it may be, I want to raise chickens or I want to have cattle. You can have those things as well, but not in the city limits. You're not going to have yeah, them. No, it's definitely you know, not going to have But like I said, um, a lot, a lot, I, I see a lot of interest in the multifamily space. Yeah. And, and people need to look at the multifamily space and make sure that's really what they want to yeah. get involved with. Because being a landlord, as you know, and I know, it ain't no joke. Yeah, it's man, it's yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and then, like I said, when you have things like rent moratoriums, where the government says that people don't got to pay their rent, then you get one person that says, "I ain't paying my rent because the government said I didn't have to," and you got everybody saying, "I'm not paying my rent." Yeah, and, and again, I, and, and again, I hope that you come back on because I know we are coming up on 50 minutes, and I yeah. know we talked a lot about the the residential side of things. Now I always want to kind of keep that on a separate side, but I I definitely agree with you in terms of. And, and this is a lot of the parts out on the commercial side or the multifamily side as far as where you invest in, the uh, type of property you invest in, whether it's a, you know, a skyscraper or a garden style or whatever the case may be. So I know it's a lot of different things to get into. How do you underwrite that that that, that deal? Uh, yeah, oh. I got you. Well, I'll tell you, one thing on the commercial space. Yeah. Um, like I said, I own 16-unit apartment complex. Nice. 32-unit buildings. And, again, you can't just jump into that space any longer you got to have some capital yeah and you got to have reserves so before you even could consider that make sure you got your money put up okay and it, it can't be in the mattress that money's got to be seasoned in the bank yeah. seasoning means your money's in the bank yeah. 60 90 120 days for sure. and i can verify that it's been there that goes for commer commercial it goes for residential housing you cannot just all of a sudden come up with 20 30 40 thousand dollars without a red light going off saying uh-uh this ain't gonna happen, okay. right? No, yeah, in the bay. Yep, no, and I and I definitely agree with that. And just just understand, because again, I came over when I you know, started what ten years ago. I was on the residential side, and on the last two or, uh, two or three years, I've been on the commercial uh, commercial side. But residential investing is a completely different ball game from like you said, you're on the sixteen units, uh, and that's a completely different calculus as far you know, uh, uh, like you said, reserves or property management. Yeah. It's just completely, it's night and day cool compared to investing on the real, uh, on the residential side with the single families or the two to four units. Yep. Bye, God. Uh, gotcha. Oh, so. Baby, we got to connect, man. Like I so said, we got so many similarities. We got so many things yeah. going on. Like I said, I'm glad that my boy Brandon is kind of kind of hooked us all up. Yeah, for sure. Bring this together. Like I said, I love being able to help consumers yeah. uh, to get in the homes. I love being able to, to help people achieve that dream and one and that's and that's one thing that's our model is that we make the dream of home ownership a reality and i stand by that man i'm trying to make sure everybody has the ability to own a home you know because it's the greatest feeling ever when you open the door to your own space yeah you walk in that door you close that door this is mine i own this yep you know ain't nothing like it man no and that's and, that, and i and i completely agree with that uh i know you know for me personally the first time my, again duplex was my first property that i owned that i stayed in one unit it was kind of nerve-wracking because i was like 23 years old and i'm like man i just signed on a loan but and it, it worked out it wasn't that big of a deal you know go about it responsibly and these are going to work out and you got that nice nest egg i just you know refied that property a year ago uh mm -hmm. like i said i bought it for 100 and refied for 150,000. so uh Oh, so was able to take out some equity uh in that property uh and and you no know, get the PMI and all that stuff uh, out the way because you got the twenty percent so yeah uh yeah so man I I definitely enjoyed this time and I we definitely have to do it again like you said I definitely appreciate Brandon for uh connecting us I guess one last thing before we leave and wrap up how can people get in touch with you if they want to kind of follow you if they want to reach out to you social media platforms yeah. you have a website how can people get in touch with you? all all of the above. above. Again, yeah. they can reach me at 734-493-1711. Uh, I'm in Canton, Michigan. Uh, again, willie.mcguire at drmconline.com is my email address. Um, everybody in the community, I've worked I've worked all over Detroit. I've worked in Northland Mall. I used, to, I used to be at Westland Mall. I've been at Fairlane Mall. I used to be in the shoe game for a long time yeah. as well. So they used to call me Westland Willie. I run 
I'll be running shop lookers down the you know, <laughs> football skills guy, you know. <laughs> but like I said, a little bit of all me, like I said, I've been in money for 20 years. Okay. Okay. And, I was showing you five years. I said 15. I said at least 15. Yeah. What you say? Hey, yeah. hey, don't five years. Don't be. Yeah, yeah. No, I've been in there 20 years. Brandon came and worked for me when uh, when I, I was over at Gold Star Mortgage in Ann Arbor. And he came to work for me. And he was one of my 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 assistants over there. But I've been in the game. I met it now. I, I learned a lot. I never, I, I always got people calling me because I didn't experience a lot in my time. And I, I've gone through a lot of tough deals and whatnot. What we do is we try to, we problem solve, we make things happen. But uh, like I said, I'll send you a link to my uh, my personal website and whatnot. But again, they can look me up, Willie McGuire. Uh, you know, um, I'm all over the law of the mortgage lending space. You can always find me as well. And my phone number 734 493 1711. I'll take your call 24 hours a day. Okay, no, that sounds like a plan. And I think one thing that you did leave out is just not just because you're in Michigan, you 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 are able to uh, you know, loan, uh, land in other states, a couple other states exactly. as well outside of Michigan, correct? Yeah, Florida, Texas, um, um, Ohio, you know. At one point, you know, I was lending all over the nation. I kind of streamlined that a little bit, no. you know, back. And soon I'll be adding more states as well. Um, I came over to Diamond Residential Mortgage in December as the divisional president. And I'm growing right now. I'm growing the company. I went a little smaller this time around, okay? And I'm rolling with change of companies when the company fits your needs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I've, been at, I've been to the Giants, and I've been down smaller. And I'll tell you, I prefer to be a little bit smaller. I can get better attention right now. Yeah, I'd rather be that. I'd rather be at that smaller, centralized company that you can go right to the head right away. That's how I started out in this game. I could go right down the hallway to the president of the company, and 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 talk to him in a heartbeat. You know, I like that feeling. But I got. You. I can. I can be more influential to my clients when I have that kind of control. Absolutely. So, like I said, David, it's been a pleasure, my friend. For sure. And my, anytime you need me, anytime you want me to come online, I'm there for you. Okay, no, I appreciate that. And we definitely have to do it again because I definitely want to get off into that on the commercial side of things to kind of pick up there and uh, and hopefully just kind of, you know, like you said, you know, we was talking offline as far as just kind of give us the what, what what the market looking like in terms of the interest rates and just kind of real estate market in general with, like you said, right now, things are at a premium and what's that, uh, the forecast as far as things coming down and whatnot. I, I, just, I guess over time, I would like to kind of maybe stay up on that just to kind of help out and provide value to the audience, to the listeners, to be able to, as they're getting off into the game, they uh, kind of know what to expect and know know what's out there, what the market is doing. Definitely, definitely, sir. Like I said, I definitely want to get on that. We can have a weekly call or whatever necessary, yeah. one-to-one okay. call, whatever on that. But like okay. I said, it is, it is kind of a seller's market right now, but there are space, there is space for buyers to get in. Again, don't be hesitant. Give us a call, and we can get you taken care of. Okay. Now, that sounds like a plan, and I think that's the best way to go out. So, Until next time, TEI family, we logging out. Thank you, sir. Have a good one.